Welcome to an AE now. I am Macy. Join me while I check out research being done by graduate student Jordan Chipka. Hi Macy. Thanks for having me. Um, this is my lab uh, under the um, late Ephraim Garcia. And today I'm just going to kind of run over an overview of everything that's happening here. So first of all, I'm going to run through our um, robot. And then I'm going to talk about our actuators that uh, we have. And then uh, lastly, I'm going to run through um, how we experiment with our actuators. For this um, robot, we run this with traditional hydraulic actuators here, here, and here. So we have a, a, a um, right hip actuator, a right knee actuator, a right ankle actuator, and then we have the exact same on the other half of it. Now, the issue um, with this is that uh, these actuators require a lot of energy, and so um, therefore hydraulic um, robotics is inefficient. So that is kind of the overall aim of this research. Now we're going to um, run over an overview of uh, the actuators that we have here. So uh, for these actuators, we use a, uh, a bladder, which we sleeve uh, on the inside of a, uh, a braiding. Now, as you can see, the um, braiding is able to you know, uh, go in and out um, to um, shrink and expand. Um, so here we have an uh, example of our actuator. So this actuator right now, we just have hooked up to air. So, um, uh, so I'm going to send in about 20 um, uh, PSI of air um, into here, but usually our, our actuators uh, run with oil and they are usually pressurized to about um, 200 uh, uh, PSI. So I'm just going to hit this uh, compressed air really quick and it's going to pressurize the actuator and as you can see it uh, expands um, radially and then uh, shrinks axially. Um, so the advantages of this are that they're uh, not as heavy as their other actuators, they're um, uh, flexible, um, compliant, um, and they're um, strong. So this is only with about 20 um, PSI. So, uh, you know, as I explained earlier, um, usually it's a lot higher. Now, if we just simply release the air from it, the actuator will return to how it was originally. Lastly, I'm just going to give you guys an overview of this rig we have here, which we run our uh, experiments for our, our actuators. So here we have uh, our in-house actuators, and then we also have a, uh, a larger um, drive actuator. So with this rig, we're able to control the uh, force as well as the stroke and pressure um, in each of these actuators. Um, and we're also able to easily swap in and out actuators, and we're also able to uh, test a uh, cluster of actuators, as you can see here. So the, uh, the advantage of, of a cluster of actuators is that we, we don't always have to activate everything that we have. So say we would like to implement this onto a um, robotic arm, and say the arm has to um, lift up an apple. Maybe we don't have to we don't have to activate all of these actuators. Whereas if the arm has to lift heavier objects, then we would have to activate all of them. So that's everything that I have here. I hope you all enjoyed this overview. Thanks for having me. Wow, I like to learn new things, and that my friend was exciting. Thank you for being part of an AE now.